Good morning. Today is Friday, March 22nd. Before I get started, I wanted to tell you about another thing that I've done. Um, I've been working on it for a long time. Um, so I am a published author. I started out writing books based on uh, a dream that my four-year-old had, who he's now 18. And well, actually I had started before that. I wrote a couple of books through a publishing company. They were actually in Target at one point, but the publishing company screwed me over. She kept selling my books, but never paid royalties. So we ended up going with a different publisher to do our, to do my third book, which was called Fuzzy Bacon. It's uh, about a cat, a cat family. And the name came about because my kids, we had a black and white cat that they named Fuzzy Bacon. So there was that, but then my, uh, that publishing company also screwed me over, took my money, didn't actually, you know, pay out royalties, anything. So I gave up on that and I went with a self publishing service. Uh, the self publishing service is now through Amazon. It's called, uh, Amazon KDP or something like that. But it used to be a separate thing um, before they merged. And basically, they um, that's the, the first book I did through them was the, the one called My Princess Warrior. And it was based on a very vivid dream that my now 18 year old had when he was four. And then we sort of like built this imaginary world around it. And each of the kids got their own characters, their own series. A lot of like one-off books too, like about random stuff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I started doing comic books. I always wrote down things that the kids would say or do. Sometimes I'd write it on my on my computer. Sometimes it was on a notebook or or on Facebook. And so in 2020, when like everything was shut down and there was nothing to do, I started making comics out of all these things that my kids had done. And um, now I have 24 books of comics. Uh, and they're, they're pretty thick books too. Like, let me show you. Um, this is the size of one of my average children's books. And, or like this one. This is the size of my average comic book. This is actually the first one I did. And all of these I drew by hand and scanned them into my computer. But now I have an iPad, so I draw them on my iPad. Here's a more recent one. So the drawings are a little bit cleaner. Now one thing you will find <clears throat> is yes, I do have 11 kids, but two of them don't appear in the comics very often. And there's a reason for that. One of my kids is nonverbal and it's really hard to put the funny things that he does into a single panel comic or even a four panel comic that I, I do some of those, it can be really hard to explain it to people in a way that they get it, where it's like funny and like a little short little punchline. So he is in the books, just not as often. And then my, my daughter, um, my oldest daughter, we didn't adopt her until she was a teenager. So she was our niece at the time. And I do have some stories from when she was little, when she would be with me. Um, because I would babysit her frequently. She was at my house a lot, but I don't have nearly as many stories written down from when she was a kid as I do with the rest of the kids. So she does start appearing in the comic books. Um, let's see, I think it's about the fifth or sixth comic book when she starts appearing in there. Because, um, when I started doing these, we weren't really like, it wasn't something that was on the horizon at the time. And then I asked her as we were starting to go through the adoption process, if she wanted to be included in the comic books and she did. So we started looking for stuff I had written down that she had done or memories that she had. So anyway, you can find all of my books on Amazon. I'll try to put a link in the description. You search my name. There is another author with a very similar name that writes very different books and her books sometimes show up. Mine are the comic books and the, the cartoon cutesy things. The other books that show up are not mine. 
just so you know. Um, anyway, I have, did I already say it? 177 titles currently. Um, I have more in the works uh, that I do plan on completing at some point. Um, the comic books are going to be the most expensive ones. I also have a Facebook page called Big Family Comics and an Instagram of the same name and they're also on webtoons if you'd like to see them for for free. Now it doesn't have all of the comics, not even close, um, but you can get a taste of what they are by going to my Facebook page or my Instagram. I do try to update that every day. With a new comic, um, Webtoons is currently, Webtoons has comics from, so far from the first four books, and like I said, not all of them, not all of the comics are on there. If you want all of them, you definitely have to buy the book. <laughs> but I get it, you know, people want to sample it out before they commit to something. So there's definitely quite a bit of it that you can find online. <clears throat> Let's see. I think I'm going with purple today. I'm going to use this Milk Tarot palette by Perfusion. Writing has always been a passion of mine. Uh, when I was in high school and we'd get assigned like a writing assignment that was like a paragraph or a page I would always go kind of a little nuts with it and I would end up with like a whole story thing um my English teacher didn't know how to grade my papers because I always did so much more than what was assigned and sometimes he was like, um, could you just like do the little bit? Could, but he also actually like really encouraged my writing too. I had an art teacher that also encouraged me a lot too. I would, anytime I had a free period or like didn't have anything to do in one of my classes, like especially my senior year, cause I already had all my credits and I was gonna graduate a year early. Then I decided not to because I thought I would spend another year with my friends. Although that didn't really work out because uh, senior year got dramatic and like my entire friend group broke up. So what I ended up doing is I spent all my time in the art room either writing or doing artwork. And honestly that was my favorite thing about high school was that the, the teachers just kind of let me do whatever at that point because <clears throat> I was a good kid I never got in any trouble and I just wanted to just wanted to write so they let me do that I, I did pottery and painting and all kinds of artwork any chance I could and when I, when I go back and read the stories I wrote, because I wrote like cringy teenage romance at the time, <clears throat> I just kind of laugh. Like some of the stories were so goofy. I still have some of them. I don't have all of them. I have a copy of a story that my friends and I had written together, but I don't have all of it because I don't know, like we, what we would do is we would write a little bit, save it, print it out, and then hand the story off to the next person and it, it would just keep cycling through everybody <clears throat> and that was great fun but like nobody seems to have the the final product of those stories that makes me sure. yeah go for it um I had some poems published when I was in high school, but it was in one of those books that ended up being like a scam where you like have to buy the book for like $40 or something. 
otherwise like yeah I don't know like all of my work though all of my all of my writing ever since I had kids is geared towards kids I haven't written like romance or anything in a long time and I don't have any of those works published I thought about turning some of them into like kids books but I just haven't gotten around to it I had so many books like waiting to be published that I had written over the years <clears throat> and it, it kind of took it took a really long time because like I would write them but I didn't necessarily have the time to to sit and illustrate them especially when the kids were little so after the twins were old enough that they weren't breastfeeding anymore all of a sudden I had all this time on my hands well not really because I still you know have a bunch of kids and a lot of stuff to do and, and then I got I got um, I started drawing more and more, getting, getting my books done, and I really, really, really wanted a tablet, so the drawing process would go much faster, it would look cleaner, didn't have all these extra steps involved, um, because, you know, when you draw on paper, then you gotta get it onto your computer somehow, and we had a scanner, but the scanner wasn't great, so then I always had to clean up the image on the computer, and blah, 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 so anyway, so I got a tablet, last spring <clears throat> and I was suddenly able to draw really fast get my books illustrated much quicker and I published close to 70 books last year the great thing about Amazon publishing is actually it doesn't cost anything unless you want to print a copy of your book which of course I did and um, so I did print off a copy of each of my books so that you know, I can have them, my kids can have them. I also, because the kids love it when I read to them, but I can't always stop what I'm doing to read. So another thing that I did in January, I um, video recorded myself reading out some of my children's books. You can find that under the channel Mama Willis Reads. Um, I made that primarily for my kids. I'm not really promoting the channel. Uh, but it is fun like you get a taste of of my children's books and you can see like what I have I didn't read out all of them partly because the books for my oldest son and daughter are with them and I didn't I just haven't bought other copies of it yet I might at some point but I do have gosh I'm not sure how many I think like 70 I read out like 70 of the books on there. I'm estimating it might have been like 68 or 72 or something. <clears throat> but um, you can go check that out. I definitely, I, I would absolutely love to make a career out of it, make some money off of it. That'd be fabulous. But my primary goal in doing the books is always just to bring, you know, for my kids, for myself, to bring joy to people. So, you know, if you, if you'd like to support me by, by buying my books, that'd be fabulous. I would be, I would be over the moon ecstatic. I, I only get about 40 cents per book in royalties. Um, Amazon kind of takes the rest of it and I try to keep my prices affordable because the book market is extremely competitive and people can't always afford things you know so I always try to keep it affordable keep the prices down so my royalties are set kind of low 40 to 40 cents to 60 cents per book and um, so that's why I do also make some of my content available to try out for free online if, if somebody wants to. Because <clears throat> at this point, I really don't think, I really don't think I'm going to make a ton of money selling books, you know? It's just one of those things. It's really hard to, it's really hard to be in a market where there's so many options, you know? It's kind of like when I, 
when I was making handmade cloth diapers, the market was kind of flooded with people doing the same thing. So I ended up not really making a whole lot of money on it. Learned a lot of new sewing skills, which was great. Made a lot of diapers for my own kids. I had all of my kids in cloth diapers up until the twins. And at that point I was like, I can't do it. And we did disposables with the twins. I don't think they were ever in cloth. Uh, cloth diapers is a lot of work, you guys. Cause it, you gotta hand wash them before you wash them. And I would have, you know, the diaper basket. And most of the time, because my kids are also close in age, I would have two or three kids in diapers all the time. For, gosh, close to, close to 18 years. By the time the twins came along, I was just like, I cannot do cloth with twins. And Naomi was still in diapers too. <clears throat> and then of course, Tilk, who's, who's now 15, he can't be potty trained um, because of his special needs. He, his, it's just never gonna happen. Uh, so for him, he was in cloth diapers up until he was like six and then medical started covering the adult diapers. Um, but anyway, my cloth diaper business didn't really end up making money. I made, I made like close to like 2000 diapers by hand and I had like bins full of them and I got really good at it, you guys. <clears throat> but the problem was <clears throat> I was too nice. I'm often too nice for my own good. And anytime somebody was like, I can't afford diapers, I would send them diapers that I had handmade. I was part of this group called Diaper Fairies that was uh, started by a like-minded friend. And basically us moms would buy diapers or give diapers to people in need. Most often it was like single moms. And what ended up happening is because these other ladies, they did make some diapers, but most of the time it ended up being, I was the only one that had anything on hand. And so I would just give them diapers and you know pay shipping and everything and oh darn it and so I ended up giving away <clears throat> the vast majority of the diapers I made and like there's nothing wrong with that it just was like I never made any money on it <clears throat> um, eventually I had to stop making diapers because I was like you know, bleeding money there. It was fun while it lasted, you know? And I don't, I don't think I'd get back into making diapers because like I said, the market is extremely competitive. There's so many out there. And then this was back when like Fuzzy Buns, Happy Heinies were still brand new and really expensive. And it was cheaper to make my own. Um, <clears throat> these days, though, you can get cloth diapers anywhere <clears throat> for fairly cheap.
I also tried my hand at like selling artwork. <clears throat> but again, I, I often didn't charge people what it was worth because I didn't honestly know what was fair to charge and what wasn't, you know? So I've tried many endeavors. or something. I think it's in the other room. Actually, like I was really impressed with it last time. Some tiny little flowery things. You know, I've decided the best way to deal with like troll comments is to thank them because the troll comments still boost the algorithm <clears throat> and get my videos pushed out to more people. Oh, I did have this one weird one that just like kept making the weirdest comments and it was starting to make me like super uncomfortable. Like constantly asking to like kiss my hand or something and I didn't know what to do about it. So I showed it to, showed it to my 18 year old and he's like, yeah, you need to block him. That was weird. <clears throat> I like that. Little flowers. Do I need to put another one here? I think I do. I wish I could find like white stamps. Like I have black ones and I have one that's red. <clears throat> but I would love to find white ones. If you guys know a brand that makes white face stamps, let me know. <clears throat> what do you think? I think it's cute. <clears throat> this water liner is so much easier to control than the cheap stuff I bought off of Timu. So I went ahead and bought some more colors, not from the same brand because Perfusion didn't have any other ones. But man, I'm gonna use this chunky glitter too. Oh, my video's getting a little long. Oh yeah, look how cute, oh, I feel cute today. Very springy, springy and cute.
This one smells so industrial, you guys. It's from Perfusion, and I normally love Perfusion stuff, but I'm not crazy about this setting spray. I gotta find a better one. One that doesn't smell. <clears throat> what am I? I'm really sad that, I mean, not really sad, you know. Hey, I'm almost done. Almost at like two seconds. Kids are starting to wake up. All right, babes, almost done. I got it. I'm gonna turn off my camera in like two seconds. There we go. You guys have a great day.